Hey, shalom everyone. This is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and welcome to the Monthly Musings. And today I would like to uh, uh, talk to you about some passages from the Brit Kadesha, the Renewed Covenant, otherwise known as the New Testament. And I want to take you to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, where it says, For you were called to this, because Messiah also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his footsteps. Now, I want to talk to you about that word example in that passage. In the Greek, it's hupogramos. Uh, hupo being the Greek word for, uh, for under, and gramos being the word for writing. So, you know, like hypodermic needle, it's a needle that goes under the skin, and gramos, that's where we get the word grammar from. So basically, it says it's, it's underwriting. Um, and so it kind of sounds weird if you if you translate it that way. So I'm going to read that passage again, and instead of example, I'll put underwriting. For you are called to this because Messiah also suffered for you, leaving you an underwriting so that you might follow in his footsteps. Now, uh, let me kind of give you the, the picture here that, that uh, Peter's trying to paint. Um, back in, in Peter's time, uh, in the Greek educational system, the way that they would uh, get children to learn how to write the the alphabet was they would get a clay tablet and they would already inscribe the alphabet on it. You know, uh, we'll we'll go with Greek, okay? Since it was since we're talking Greek here, you know, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they would bake this clay tablet and set those letters in stone. Give the child the tablet and a stylus, and they would trace. They would copy, they would trace over each letter so they could learn how to write the letters properly. Uh, it, it, was, it was a method of tracing. And also you kind of get that same uh, picture uh, in that verse at the end where it says, um, so that you might follow in his footsteps. So just imagine somebody being out there uh, traipsing through the snow and uh, somebody has a pair of snow boots on and somebody just has tennis shoes. Well, to try to uh, keep the guy with the tennis shoes from not getting too cold or getting snow in his shoes, uh, he would follow in the footsteps of the one who already made tracks before him with the big snow boots. So he would be following in that person's footsteps. Uh, so there's, there's that kind of picture there. Um, for you were called to this because Messiah also suffer, suffered for you, leaving you an example, you know, leaving something for you to copy leaving something for you to trace so that you might follow in his footsteps. Uh, the next verse I want to take you to is written by Rav Shaul, the Apostle Paul. And in Ephesians 1, 2, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love, just as Messiah also loved us and gave himself up for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a fragrant aroma. So I want to focus on that first part. Therefore, be imitators of God. That Greek word for imitators is mimetes. It's where we get the English word mimic, you know, to copy, to mimic. And it all always reminds me of uh, you know, several things. You know, first, when you're going on a road trip with your siblings and, the, and you're in the back seat and you got this war going on, who, you know, and you draw a line right down the middle of the seat and then you start pestering each other and all of a sudden somebody starts mocking, mimicking the other one. Mom, tell him to stop bothering me. Mom, tell him to stop bothering me. Mom, he's repeating everything that I say. Mom, he's repeating everything that I say. <laughs> You know, it, it also reminds me of when I was a child and I saw the original Karate Kid. My sister and her boyfriend took me out to see it. What was the first thing that I did as soon as the movie was over and we were walking out of the theater? Buddy, I was practicing that crane move right outside the theater and doing all these karate chops and moves and wax on and wax off. I was mimicking, mimicking I was imitating uh, Ralph Macchio. I wanted to be like Ralph Macchio. I, I could relate to the guy. I, I knew, uh, you know, I, I was that proverbial 90-pound wuss that always got bullied and picked on. And, man, I wanted to, to know karate like Ralph Macchio, so I would imitate him. And so that's kind of what we're getting here in, in Ephesians where it says, Paul says, be imitators of God. And what, what the picture that it's drawing here is a child mimicking the actions of a parent. And I remember when I was small... And uh, my dad took me to, to get a haircut. And 
Barbara set me down in the chair in the little booster seat and says, what kind of haircut do you want? Now, my dad had dark black hair and he had one of those Superman haircuts, if you know what I mean. It was parted on the side and had that little curl, that little swoop. And I said proudly, I want a black haircut. In other words, I was saying, I wanted a haircut just like my dad. I want to look like and be just like my dad. And that's the picture that Paul is, is, is drawing here. Be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love just as Messiah loved us. Now, um, I also want to uh, focus in on one last passage. It's another uh, Rav Shul, Apostle Paul passage. And it's 1 Corinthians 11.1 1, where it says, Be mimetes, be imitators, be mimickers of me, just as I also am of Messiah. Now, to us, with the Western mindset, that seems a little cocky. That's, that seems a little arrogant. Oh, be imitators of me, just as also I am of Messiah. But that's, that's not what Paul was saying. He wasn't being cocky. He wasn't being arrogant. He wasn't puffing out his chest. But let's put ourselves in the, the, uh, the mind frame of Jewish people and Jewish believers at this time. In Judaism, when you were a disciple of a rabbi, you followed that rabbi, everything that they said and did. You wanted to look like the rabbi, talk like the rabbi, preach and teach like the rabbi, study like the rabbi, eat like the rabbi, smell like the rabbi. You wanted to do everything like that rabbi. So you studied uh, his every move. And, um, you know, the Apostle Paul was a disciple of Gamaliel. And he was a very famous rabbi uh, at that time, and still is today among Jews around the world. You go into any synagogue or Jewish community, ask who Gamaliel is, they'll know exactly who it is, because he uh, is quoted several times in the Talmud, which is the compendium of Jewish knowledge and, and commentary on the Torah and Jewish tradition. But he's also mentioned several times in the Brit Chadesha, the Renewed Covenant, uh, where it says that 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 uh, uh, Paul was uh, his disciple. But also Gamaliel kind of made sort of a defense for the the apostles and and, and the believers in the faith. Uh, a couple of them were being detained, and uh, the Sanhedrin was trying to figure out what to do with them. And uh, Gamaliel said, look, guys, we've seen this before. We've seen charismatic leaders rise up, and he gave two examples. And he said, you know, each time this movement, you know, they only gained hundreds of followers, and it ended up petering out on its own, you know. So if, if this is of man, who cares? Let it go. It, it's going to die out on its own. But if it's of God, you won't be able to stop it, and you'll find yourself fighting against God. So uh, Paul was... was um, you know, he was he was taught and trained to be just like Gamaliel. And there's several uh, comical, actually, Jewish stories about Jewish dynasties. Um, each sect of, of Judaism has a rabbi. Some rabbis have died and are gone and passed, and some continue a succession of, of dynastic rabbis, and, and the current head rabbi is, is the leader, and he's the one to be followed and imitated. Um, and so... Uh, the people in the the disciples of these rabbis are very uh, keen on observing everything that that their rabbi says and does uh, because they want to be just like them so like let's say that the rabbi was was teaching and, and and he was teaching and he was getting into it and all of a sudden maybe he he pushed his keep up like this or something and just kept teaching and didn't think about it well you'd see all the the young disciples or, or the kids in the audience be going because oh. they wanted to be just like the rabbi right now, there's a story that one rabbi caught one of his disciples hiding in the latrine and was there waiting for him when he was going to go to the toilet. And the rabbi's like, what are you doing? He's like, I want to know the right way to use the restroom. Uh, there's another comical story of a rabbi, uh, you know, and him and his wife, uh, you know, about to make love and they were in bed and all of a sudden, the rabbi notices something. something's not right. He looks under the bed, and there's a disciple under his bed. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, Rabbi, I've got to know the right way how to make love to my wife. That's how serious disciples were of following the rabbi. Why hasn't this caught on in Christianity? Why hasn't this caught on to people who call themselves Christians, which means little Christ? You know, why hasn't caught on? We, we, it's not what would Jesus do. It's do what Jesus did. Do what Yeshua did. And to know what he did, and to follow him, and to uh, mimetes, to uh, imitate him, to mimic him, to to uh, follow his his hupogramos, his example, uh, we're to read, 
you know, the Gospels to find out what he taught, how he lived, how he acted, how he expected. And I'm telling you, he followed the Torah to the letter. And he expanded on the Torah and brought out its full and complete spiritual meaning um, for us to, to follow and to continue on in. Uh, so um, that, that's, that's uh, kind of the gist of that. You know, Paul was so confident in the way he walked in Messiah and how he followed his rabbi, Yeshua the Messiah. He was so confident in that, that he was, that he was uh, able to tell other people, imitate me, because if you imitate me, you're going to be imitating the Messiah, because I follow the Messiah so meticulously and so closely. Right? So, uh, anyway, that's uh, the monthly musing for this month. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and Shalom, and Shavuotov.